think the first point is that uh, the European banking sector is now much stronger, that we have done a further progress in the strengthening of the capital of the banks, which makes them safer in front of possible uh, future crises. What is more important in my view is also that banks uh, clean their balance sheets and uh, this is in my view a precondition for banks uh, to uh, start lending again. So uh, as long as banks are still clogged in their balance sheets with bad assets, legacy of the crisis, they, it might be difficult for them to restart lending. So I think it was an important step forward. The best way in which uh, regulators and supervisory authorities can support a safe environment, an efficient uh, contribution of the banking sector to uh, growth and employment is by making banks safer, I think. This doesn't mean that some of the actions that we take should not also an eye on the impact on the real economy, on growth, for instance, in the financing of small and medium enterprises, which in Europe uh, uh, cover for, let's say, the bulk of the, of the employment and the new employment generated. Uh, we have indeed taken care of this by, uh, let's say, having a better treatment, lower capital charges and trying to avoid the toughening of the regulatory framework where adversely affecting lending to small and medium enterprises. So we need to find the balance between these two objectives. What we have seen, the data, show that at the EU level and in each country, the banks which had strengthened their capital position the most are also the banks which are lending the most. It is the banks which are weak in terms of capital that are economizing on capital and restrict lending. So in my view, there is not this uh, huge trade-off in a sense. I mean, the strengthening of the banking sector is actually a precondition in my view to re-establish, uh, let's say, banks which are able to support growth in the, in the real economy.